thank you, thank you, Masha, for uh, for inviting me uh, and for this opportunity to uh, to speak at the, this uh, interesting day. Uh, well, I'm indeed uh, interested in um, elections and plebiscites and all kinds of voting from a theoretical point of view and. Uh, this is probably the the main reason this election is interesting. The ongoing election is interesting for me, uh, just because it is largely an election about the election, uh, with both sides worried that their opponents endanger the election itself, election as an institution, and probably even American democracy uh, with it. Uh, that's why they try to convince people to vote in order to save democracy. And I think it's interesting to see how we put so much hope in this institution in, in election. We believe that our future depends on the, on the outcome of the election. We worship election and fear that it might be too fragile. We assume that democracy stands and falls with the election. And indeed we got used to the idea that when we want the people to decide, uh, we should take a vote. When we complain that these days there is too little power in the people, we think it would be democratic uh, to let them vote on, on all major issues. And in that case, uh, you, the US probably would have long had the, the healthcare for all, uh, had the people voted uh, on this issue uh, directly. Now, this association between democracy and elections works on various, uh, various occasions. For instance, how do we distinguish between the democratic and the non-democratic countries? It's fairly simple. If there are free and fair elections, then the regime uh, is believed to be democratic. And sometimes we are even ready to concede that the regime is probably not really liberal, which is a different thing uh, from, from being democratic. But still, if the majority votes in support of the leader, we have to accept him or her usually it is uh, him in that kind of regime, uh, have to accept as a popular leader. Well, uh, that means that we tend to identify democracy with elections. This is the, the, this, the most simple definition of, of democracy. Democracy is, is elections. Uh, now, from the viewpoint of political theory, that all sounds rather odd. Uh, since Aristotle's famous classification of regimes, uh, we have learned that appointing uh, magistrates to, to election is not democratic, but rather aristocratic or oligarchic. Well, Aristotle makes here a definitional point. Uh, look, when we vote, we necessarily choose the best. Even if we want to be represented by someone who who's resembling us as closely as possible, we still vote for the greatest similarity. And therefore we end up uh, by electing the best to rule. This is the rule of the best. And this is the textbook definition of aristocracy. Uh, that's why of course Aristotle uh, is certain that uh, vote or election is actually not a, a democratic institution. But there is of course a, a more straightforward argument. Uh, the most important fact about elections is that uh, elections are always won by those who hold them. Uh, this is obvious in countries like, like Belarus uh, these days, uh, for instance, where it doesn't matter how people voted. The president who holds the elections uh, tells the result. Uh, and this is probably less obvious uh, in the countries uh, like United States, where the election is held jointly by two competing parties forming together the ruling elite. And the parties make sure that no contender will ever have a chance to win if not approved by the party establishment. Uh, and indeed, uh, although in, in theory, at least in, in liberal democratic societies, uh, everyone has equal rights to cast the ballot and to be elected. In reality, we know, of course, that election is the competition between the factions of the elite, the factions of, of this, this group of super rich and super influential people. And uh, well, let's, let's be honest, each of us has uh, zero chance uh, even to run. 
and therefore, uh, election is, of course, an institution appropriate for the for the oligarchy, as opposed, for instance, to rotation, uh, which is purely democratic, precisely because every citizen has equal chance to hold the office. And I think this gives a hint on why uh, in our age, when elections have spread all over the world as a key political institution, why this age is also the age of such impressive inequality. Politics organized through elections make sure that the power is held by the rich. So when, when the, we, will, we often hear them saying that the election is rigged, in certain sense, it is, of course, true. It has always been rigged. Uh, election emerged over the last two centuries as a key tool for producing democratic legitimacy in non-democratic regimes. Uh, and this, I think, sheds some light on some other facts that we might otherwise find difficult to explain. Uh, for instance, the autocratic rulers often embrace the vote uh, the various practices of vote, such as elections, plebiscites, uh, instead of trying to cancel it. I'm thinking here of Russia, of course, but not, uh, not only of Russia, also of Hungary. Uh, I would be interested to learn uh, more about, uh, about the way elections and plebiscites are used in Turkey. There's also a very interesting uh, case. But uh, this is the case precisely because elections are perfectly fit for producing democratic legitimacy for the ruling elites. And that's why they tend to extend uh, voting rather than uh, suppressing it. Uh, or take, for example, the foreign turnout and the general disappointment in elections in so many countries all over the world. Uh, you remember, of course, that in 2016, when the election in the US had already been declared the most important uh, election in American history, half of the voters chose to sit it out. Uh, this time, of course, it will be different uh, for various reasons, but the general pattern holds. Uh, it is getting more and more difficult to get people out to vote, precisely because people have learned that the vote seldom changes anything at all. Uh, well, we should probably ask, uh, how did we get here? How democracy got electoralized? How did it happen that our democratic imagination got paralyzed by elections? So that it is difficult for us to think beyond the elections, uh, to think of the ways to restore democracy other than holding uh, more votes. Uh, obviously, I have no time to answer these questions. It would take a long discussion uh, about historical and theoretical foundations of our political regimes, uh, but probably uh, you will find these questions uh, worth asking. Uh, now to wrap it up, uh, I should make it clear that I'm definitely not trying to discourage you from voting and uh, particularly from voting today. Uh, after all, even if you're a Democrat, uh, you, shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't abstain categorically from using uh, non-democratic institutions because sometimes the people can take advantage of the elections and of the conflict between the elites. So uh, often, of course, voting makes sense. Uh, but the bottom line is that it would be unwise to identify the unraveling of the elections uh, that we are witnessing, uh, we witnessing recently. It would be uh, incorrect to identify it with the crisis of democracy in general. It is rather the deficit of real democracy, of the feeling of popular rule that makes us focus so much on the elections. And this feeling of not being represented, not being heard, of always being ruled and never ruling. This is the feeling that puts so much pressure on the election. And uh, however important the outcome of today's general election can be, uh, it is unfortunately not going to solve the issue of democracy simply because this issue is not going to be solved uh, through, through elections. Thank you. Grisha, thank you so much for your, uh, for your uh, so, uh, uh, short but sharp uh, definition of um, election and how actually uh, those processes are uh, in executed in, um, um, uh, in contemporary uh, society today.